Welcome back to The Breakfast. Moving away from a discussion on security, we, of course, uh, told you earlier that today we're celebrating World AIDS Day. Every 1st of December, um, it is uh, brought into the conversation again to uh, remind uh, us and the rest of the world of the HIV presence in, 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 in the world today. More than 30 million people across the world um, are still um, suffering from HIV and uh, AIDS. We've um, invited this morning um, from the UNICEF Health and HIV, uh, Dorothy Ochola Odongo. Thank you so much for joining us and for uh, stepping in this morning. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, let's start with the adolescents and children figure, 0 to 14 years, 14 to 25 years, women, you know, and then we have the pandemic coming to exacerbate uh, what we have on the ground. How did this affect mm -hmm. the access to antiretroviral um, anti drugs and other um, um, help that um, HIV and AIDS patients need? Okay, thank you. Well, uh, the antiretroviral uh, therapy has had an impact on the numbers of HIV AIDS in general, but that does not uh, take away the fact that up till now, we, we still have a huge number of people that have had the virus, 38 million uh, to be exact. And uh, out of those, 35 million have since lost their lives to this epidemic. When it comes to uh, young people and adolescents, um, a, a UNICEF report that has been released today estimates that globally in 2019, the total number of children living with HIV AIDS rose to 2.8 million. That means like every minute, every, sec every minute and 40 seconds, we're having about 20 something children being infected with HIV AIDS. In Nigeria, this is about um, 22,000 new infections occurring in children between the ages of zero to 14 years. And when it comes to adolescents, um, adolescents, um, ab about 15% of the global AIDS death in children occurs, I mean, in, in global aid related death occurs in children and adolescents. 15% of these deaths are actually in Nigeria. Yeah, the, the figures are shocking, ma'am. But I, I wanted to find yes. out how has the pandemic affected access to these life-saving services that keep HIV and AIDS victims um, safe and alive? Yes, so generally, uh, you mean the, the, the COVID pandemic? Yeah. Yes, how it has affected access yes. to services by HIV AIDS patients. So the COVID pandemic has actually caused a re led to a reduction in access to these services. There's been a disruption in, in services. For one reason being that the, the, the lockdown made, made, uh, made it clear that um, about 30, I mean, 15 to 25% of, of services could not be accessed because of the lockdown. But in addition, the health care providers were also overwhelmed with responding to the COVID pandemic. So the, the number of pregnant women living in the, uh, with HIV globally, as we know, is about 1.3 million. And then is, can, we, can we start that again? Uh no, no, no. Oh, oh, yes, you, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yes. So basically what I'm saying, the, the services have been disrupted. There's been a, a, about um, 15 to 25% disruption in, health, in healthcare services for people living with HIV AIDS. What has been done is to try and minimize this, disrupt, this disruption in services. The Ministry of Health came up with guidelines to promote multi-month prescription of drugs. So that instead of people coming for one, one month supply of, of uh, antiretroviral drugs, they get a three month supply of drugs. And that means that they're having to access the health facilities is limited during the COVID, COVID pandemic. But at the same time, they're getting all the drugs that they need. So that is how the, the pandemic, we've responded to the pandemic and made sure that the services still continue um, despite COVID. 
the the figures the um, figures that we've mentioned this morning are pretty shocking. You know, it seems mm -hmm. um, almost like you know there's not a lot of awareness anymore on um, HIV and uh, protection and and um, um, staying you know safe all the time. Do you would you agree that that is true? The conversation on HIV seems to be dying down, and uh, there's uh, less and less people uh, protecting themselves um, in every way possible. That is very true. And part of the reason being that the HIV pandemic has been with us for almost 40 years. And, you know, it, the, you could say there's a, a bit of a fatigue in terms of messaging for HIV AIDS. So uh, when, when a new pandemic comes up, like the COVID pandemic, attention gets drawn away from the HIV AIDS pandemic. But then we have to remember that, um, uh, that while, while the HIV pandemic has been around for so long and it still continues to affect so many people, there is still no vaccine against HIV AIDS. If we look at the, the, um, the COVID pandemic that has been around for just about a year now, it has affected many people globally, 11 million deaths, 11 million people affected and uh, um, <clears throat> quite a number who have died. But at least there's now hope uh, against, uh, against the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is not the case for HIV and AIDS. And the other issue about HIV AIDS, of course, is the, the stigma related to this illness. Um, uh, People tend to feel that if you acquire HIV AIDS, it's because you you have misbehaved in one way or the other, which is not the case in, in the case of um, of uh, other other pandemics like COVID. So yes, uh, attention tends to be drawn away, and yet we remain with the challenge that quite a number of people uh, around the globe still do not have the facts, do not have the correct knowledge about how protect themselves from this deadly virus. Talk, talking about um, adequate knowledge, the figures released for 2019 indicate that the number of adolescent girls uh, that got infected with um, HIV was higher, over 3,000 mm. um, um, figures higher than that of yes. the boys um, in Nigeria. So my, my question would be, what kind of messaging should we be exploring at this time to reach more of this demography um, that HIV is still very much around. Yes, particularly for adolescents. Um, well, one of the challenges we have with programming for adolescents is that it's, they are not often considered a priority. And yet for a fact, as you say, the, num the, num the, the figures released for these young people is kind of shocking. While the awareness about HIV AIDS amongst adolescents is quite high, um, you would say it's really over 80%. People are aware about HIV AIDS, including young people. But comprehensive knowledge is very low. It's estimated at about 23% for adolescents. Uh, the no that is the knowledge for the correct uh, uh, modes of transmission amongst these people. And part of the issue, again, as I mentioned, is, is stigma and not prioritizing programming for, for the adolescents and young people, and also a lack of integration for young people. Having, having said that, I think what is very important is that we need to be able to reach these young people with messaging that makes sense to them and use the channels that they resonate with. So for example, um, for those who are able to access social media, um, you work, we, it's important to work with the young people themselves to design messages that will resonate with their peers and, and, and pass on these messages through social media and so on. For the young people that are not, are not in school or not, not having access to social media, there are other channels like edutainment, like community platforms, youth groups in the community. If they can be equipped with the correct knowledge, they should be able to pass this knowledge on to their organizations. As UNICEF, we have been supporting young people, support groups in the various states to be able to work together, particularly those who have tested positive, uh, work together with their peers 
to pass on the right messages about what do you do to protect yourself from HIV AIDS? Where can you go for a test? What happens when you're positive? Um, what, um, how do you maintain the use of these drugs so that you have the maximum effect from them? And so it's important, first and foremost, yeah, to work with the young people themselves and to pass on the messages in the form that they understand. And secondly, we should not have in services that are only um, looking at the, the young person per se, it should also be integrated into overall services in the health facility, while at the same time um, targeting the young people. We need to have adolescent friendly health services okay. to support these young people. And for the female child, they need even more support. So we have also the school based interventions for those children that are in school. And with the, it, for these school-based interventions, you have you know, a, a one or two teachers that have been identified and trained to be able to counsel the young people uh, or in, uh, um, give them the right knowledge and education about HIV AIDS and help them to protect themselves. All right. One Dorothy, other thing I, I wanna, we need to target as well. I wanna quickly okay. step in um, because of time. Um, and of course, I apologize for um, jumping in uh, so abruptly. But I, I want to ask, and I'm worried about why we have more female figures, you know, than, than male. Is there something that we're not, you know, aware of? There's something that is going on that uh, people need to be aware of. And then I also want you to quickly address the phrase that HIV is not a death sentence. Is that still true um, in our world today? Yes. Okay, thank you. So for the first uh, part about... Uh, <clears throat> Um, the first, the first question you asked about uh, why the young girl more vulnerable than the, the the boy, the same age. I think it's also important to understand that the young people do not necessarily get the infection from their peers. So there's the transgen transgenerational um, um, sec uh, uh, sex. Young young girls tend to relate more with older men. And I, I see, I mean, the data is clearly indicating that out of 130,000 adolescent girls who are newly infected uh, in 2019 globally, um, only 44,000 uh, are adolescent boys. So yes, it's not peer to peer, we, it's more transgenerational. So for us to curb this, we need to ad uh, address also the older people uh, in terms of you know, trying to limit um, uh, the, the, or rather empower the young girls not to have to go for the older men who are more likely to, to, to um, infect, them with, uh, infect them with HIV AIDS. Okay, uh, so then, the UNICEF report uh, called on all government and, um, um, you know, NGOs to protect, sustain, and accelerate progress in fighting childhood HIV. What's uh, your UNICEF's assessment of the efforts put in uh, to educate and provide essential services for HIV patients in Nigeria and what more can be done to accelerate access to um, life-saving uh, medications? Uh, well, uh, in terms of life-saving medication, um, we still do uh, fall short, not, not for the medication per se, but also in terms of trying to get that medication to the people that need it. So um, uh, if we start right from the supplier side, important that um, we have the right forecasting uh, for, these, for these medications that will also reach the younger um, the people. But for us to be able to do this, we have to also have the right number of, of um, the, the right, right number of HIV AIDS testing facilities so that we know roughly how many um, people are likely to be um, tested positive, especially the young people. So yes, we need the right forecasting. We need uh, to work with the different um, NGOs, with the different um, um, partners in the health system to make sure that we get these uh, uh, um, antiretroviral drugs to the, to the people that need it, particularly the young people. So yeah, we need to address um, also um, the right communication 
uh, to, to the young people and the organization that support treatment for young people to be able to get this um, um, treatment right. to them. Okay. Right. Dorothy Ochola Odongo, I hope I pronounced it right. Um, thank you so much yeah. for your time this morning. Um, and uh, we hope that the message continues to uh, travel as far as possible um, and not get lost in the conversation of COVID-19. HIV AIDS is still very real and is still very, very dangerous. Thanks for your time and um, talk to you again. Thank you very much. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, she, she highlighted all the figures and they're not good. Oh, but I'm worried about the girl to, you know, uh, transmission, um, well, infection yeah, rate. You know, and, you know, and she's mentioned now it's, it's mostly transgenerational um, infection, you know, from older men to younger girls, you know. So it really does, t you know, paint a picture of what we're um, dealing with in our yeah, society. And, 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 why and, do we have more younger girls? Well, I know why, but... Um, how do you know why? Um, th there's something that uh, 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 came to my mind as well while she was talking. Um, the proliferation of um, uh, the internet, the access rather, increased yes. access to uh, the internet has exposed younger people to content that they ordinarily wouldn't have access to. And this has, for me, spiked the... Um, the proximity, how quickly young people engage in sexual activity. Uh, because if they're, for me, a lot more distracted with things about more of learning and growing and communicating, with, because uh, nowadays it seems everybody's virtual. You, yes. you barely have friends, uh, you're focused on your phone. And, and then when you do find the friend, the only interpretation that can go to that is that of the sexual. It makes nature. it easier for older men to prey on, on these adolescent girls, which is scary. If, I, is ever, really, really if scary. I ever have a daughter, you'll be 15 at really least scary. before you get a phone. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank no. you. For Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.